today we are going to start with the chapter solid state as we all know that matter can exist in three different states it can exist in three different states first one is solid liquid and gas and we all are aware of the characteristic properties of this solid liquid and gas so just before we start with the chapter let's list out the characteristic properties of the solids liquids and gases especially we'll concentrate on the characteristic of solids solids generally have definite mass also they have definite volume and shape if you take a piece of rock its mass its volume and the shape will remain same you can just apply force and break it but the composition will not change and its volume will not change mass volume and shape that will not change so this is a very essential characteristic of a solid then you will see that in solid the particles are kept very close to each other so we say that the intermolecular distance is smallest amongst all the three states so we'll write intermolecular distance is short and when they are kept why the molecules are kept at a so close distance what is the reason the reason is the force of attraction between the solid molecules that is very very strong so that is the reason why the molecules are situated so close to each other so we can also conclude that the intermolecular forces are strong intermolecular forces are strong what are the solids made up of they are made up of atoms molecules or ions and their positions inside the solid that is fixed they don't move around they don't change their positions so we can say that the constituent particles of solids have definite position these particles are atoms molecules or ions now the solids are also rigid or incompressible we cannot compress a solid they are rigid or incompressible all right now these are few properties which differentiates between solids and liquids and gas so this is how this is why solids are different from liquids and gases all right so now as we have already learnt about the characteristics of solids we'll see how many types of solids are present you take the example of 
salt and talcum powder. If you take salt on your palm and try to rub it with a finger, you can feel some granules are present in that. But if you take talcum powder and try to rub it with your fingers, you will not be able to feel any granules or any particles in that. You will feel it is very soft. So, can we say that these are two different, same type of solids? No, they are different because they are, they are having different characteristics. So, broadly we can classify the solids into two types. We can classify them into two types. Crystalline and amorphous. Now the salt example that I gave that is a crystalline substance and talc is, a, is an amorphous example. Alright. So now what is the basic difference between crystalline and amorphous? Crystalline substances will have a definite geometry or a definite structure whereas amorphous substances will not have any definite geometry or structure. Let me show you by drawing something. Suppose this is a part of a crystalline structure and this is a part of an amorphous structure. So here, there will be a definite arrangement like this. You can see the particles over here, they are arranged in a proper manner. There is regularity in the arrangement of these atoms. You can see they are, they are following a proper regularity in the arrangement. But in case of amorphous, you will see they are randomly present. There is no regularity between the molecules. So this is why crystalline substances, they have a definite geometry, but amorphous substances, they do not have any de definite geometry. Now there are some properties, there are some different properties for these amorphous and crystalline substances. So let's list out the properties of these two. Crystalline amorphous. Now when a crystalline solid melts, it has a very sharp melting point whereas amorphous substances they melt over a range. We cannot say that what will be the melting point of a glass because slowly it starts becoming soft and then, then a little more soft and then it melts finally to a liquid. But if you try to melt any crystalline substance, it will sharp at a particular point point of temperature it will convert from solid to liquid. So that's what we say that crystalline substances have sharp melting points but amorphous there is a range of melting point. They don't melt at a particular temperature. Then 
they have directional properties also like isotropy crystalline substances are anisotropic in nature whereas amorphous solids are isotropic in nature let me just write it then i'll explain what is this property and isotropic and these are isotropic an isotropic means they have directional property that means if you are measuring any physical quantity from one direction then that will be different than from the other direction this is because of the proper arrangement or the proper geometry of crystalline substances but in case of amorphous substances as because they do not have a proper arrangement of the atoms or molecules from whichever direction you try to measure the physical property or any kind of property the property will be same that is the reason why amorphous substances are isotropic in nature and crystalline sub substances are anisotropic in nature and as you have already seen the structure of the crystalline and amorphous substances the crystal structure of a crystalline stru uh, substance it starts with a small crystalline structure and that small structure keeps on repeating itself and it forms a large crystal so that is the reason why it has a long range order long range order means the crystalline structure maintains its crystalline behavior or crystalline characteristic till a long range the small structure of the crystal keeps on repeating itself till a long range but amorphous substances there is no repetition of any crystalline any particular structure hence it has a very short range order so we'll write it has long range order and it has short range order sometimes the amorphous substances are also called as pseudo solids or super super cool liquids because they are not solids they behave like solids they don't possess all the characteristics of a solid that's the reason why these are called as pseudo solids or super cooled liquids whereas crystalline substances are called as true solids because they follow all the characteristic of a solid pseudo solids pseudo means false so pseudo solids are super cool liquids now one more very important property of this solids are when you try to cut a solid what happens when you will try to cut a crystalline solid they will cut they will have a sharp edge when you are cutting any crystalline solid they will have a sharp edge and they will split into pieces if you are uh, trying to cut it so say they will split into two pieces and the new surface which is generated that will be plain smooth and shiny all right so they will have plain surface when tried to cut and smooth but in case of amorphous solids the edges or the surface which will be generated after cutting that will be rough or irregular 
rough or irregular uh, surface will be generated when you try to cut any amorphous substance all right so this table you can also use to differentiate between crystalline solids and amorphous solids i hope the types of solids and characteristics of solids are clear to you thank you